Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to do a quick video that reviews all of the monetary and fiscal policy stuff. So that's basically what we've been looking at for a while now, this idea of taking that long run aggregate supply model and using it to help us understand both how something bad affects the economy and how we can affect it. And we talked about this in the last week looking at the big debates in macroeconomics. So one of those big debates is the debate in that rat battle video we talked about and watched together, which is this question of whether or not we should try to fix the economy. So let's go to the whiteboard and talk about what we're talking about. So remember this all starts with our model of long run aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So we have output GDP and our price level up here which is basically GDP and inflation, two of our major measures of the economy. And remember, we've also kind of low-key have down here unemployment. It's not mentioned, but generally when output goes up, we're going to expect unemployment to go down. And that's just part of the way the economy works. And then we're going to have price level be inflation going up and down, contrary to that. We'll start with aggregate demand. short run aggregate supply and long run aggregate supply. And remember, long run aggregate supply is based on our ability to produce goods and services in the long run. So there's a natural rate of output, um, which is the GDP we can produce with our production function, which is why the only things that will shift long run aggregate supply are going to be things in that production function. Technological advancement, human capital, attainment, physical capital, labor force, and natural resources. So these things permanently affect our ability to produce goods and services on a national year after year after year level. That's what would move this out or for, back or forth. Aggregate demand is determined by um, our determinants of our components of GDP, consumption spending, investment spending, government spending, and net exports, C plus I plus G plus NX. Short run aggregate supply can be shifted by short run changes in the determinants of supply. So things like oil prices changing for a few months or a drought, meaning that there's less um, grains and soybean being produced in a given season, but it's going to be short run stuff, less than a year usually. Um, and then the other way short run aggregate supply is going to work is that equation we have that looks at the differences between the expected price level and the actual price level. And it says that GDP might, or our real GDP, our um, level of output might differ from the natural rate of output if there's some difference in between the price level and the expected price level, right? So if the expected price level is here and the actual price level is higher, we're going to expect output to be a little bit higher than it would have been. And that's what's going to happen when we're in a recession or a period of expansion, that business cycle, that idea that the economy is always growing upward, but there are going to be valleys and troughs, uh, peaks and troughs around it, right? So that's aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So we can have a bunch of different things happen. Remember, we can have shocks that will affect consumption, decreases in income, changes in how the society feels about the economy. Those might affect, affect consumption. Um, changes in how firms feel about the economy, changes in incentives to borrow or to grow the uh, business are going to affect investment spending. Government spending is exogenous, which is just a fancy way of saying it's not determined by the price level. It's determined by the government. And then net exports, something could happen in another economy. They could have a uh, recession or an expansion. There we go. And that could change um, net exports, other countries' demand for our goods. Um, so we've talked about that a lot. So if we saw um, pandemic, decrease in consumption, decrease in investment spending, because it's global, decrease in net exports, that shifts 
aggregate demand down. We're going to see the price level decrease. We're going to see output decrease because of mis um, because of the difference between the expected price level and actual price level. Um, when that happens, we have a choice of how to respond. So let's go ahead and put that in. Um, so COVID-19 is going to decrease consumption, investment, and net exports. Shifting aggregate demand in. Giving us a recession and deflation. We can now use monetary or fiscal policy to try to help the economy, right? So remember monetary policy is conducted by the central bank. They can either use the discount rate the reserve requirement oops, or open market operations to try to change the federal funds rate and what they'll do is they will shift the money supply which will change the interest rate which will change aggregate demand through investment mostly, but not always through investment, right? And then we also have fiscal policy, which is when the government can use taxes to change consumption, to change aggregate demand, or government spending to change aggregate demand. Okay, so those are the two types of policy and the mechanisms of each. There's three types. There's three tools of monetary policy, two tools of fiscal policy. They both end up affecting aggregate demand. Monetary policy goes through the money supply and fiscal policy doesn't. So how would we change the economy with fiscal policy? That's easy. We want to lower taxes to raise consumption to shift aggregate demand out or raise government spending to shift aggregate demand out. If we wanted to engage in monetary policy, we would lower the discount rate, lower the reserve requirement or buy oops, bonds and that would shift the money supply out, more money flowing through the economy. It's gonna make it cheaper to borrow which is going to increase investment spending and probably consumption too, and shift aggregate demand out. So those are the different ways we could try to stabilize the economy, get it back to where it was. It doesn't always work the way we want. Um, sometimes when the Federal Reserve lowers the, re the reserve requirement, banks still hold higher reserves because they're anxious about the economy. We saw that in the Great Recession. Um, after so many mortgages defaulted, banks held larger than required reserves because they were too afraid to loan money out. So that tool didn't work. Um, sometimes when we lower taxes, households don't spend that money as much, right? That's that marginal propensity to consume that multiplies the money through the economy. If lowering taxes doesn't change consumption, it's not going to shift aggregate demand. Um, government spending is pretty direct, um, but there is some argument that, and, and it can multiply through the economy through that money multiplier too. Um, but it can also have a little bit of a bounce back because raising government spending or consumption is going to also drive the price level up and that's going to tend to shift money demand out and raise interest rates. And that's part of why this is confusing is because we have to always keep money demand and supply in mind also. But that's the basics of aggregate demand and aggregate supply. So we have this other board here, which we've looked at a couple of times before. We can see how, oh, look, it's all right there from our last lecture. <laughs> um, oh, we're getting lower and lower here. 
Um, so the Fed can use open market operations discount rate or reserve requirement to target the federal funds rate to shift money supply in or out to raise or lower the interest rate to affect aggregate demand. And that's going to shift. If the money supply shifts out, we're going to see the interest rate go down. If the money supply shifts in, the interest rate is going to go up. Higher interest rates mean lower um, output or lower price level, and lower interest rates mean higher levels of output. Okay, hopefully that's a nice little review. That's the big, big stuff you need to know about aggregate demand and aggregate supply. The other details aren't as important. This is the big stuff I want you to know. I want you to be able to graph this curve, graph this graph, and use these tools to solve a problem with the economy. So if there's a, um, let's do one last example, right? One last example, and we're going to do something we haven't done before. We've talked a lot about recessions and crises. Let's talk about what would happen if instead we had the economy going too high too fast. We're going to talk about the 80s. All right. So I don't know if you know this, but in the 80s, we had a gas shortage. So let's get that's super effective. There we go. I'm just going to fix that and fix that and fix that. OK. So let's say we're in the economy, everything's humming along, and then we have some uh, a change in gas prices. And this is something some people have asked for, so this will be a kind of fun example. Um, and this is when we see the Federal Reserve do unpopular things rather than just trying to stimulate the economy. So what we have is a shock to the economy which is high oil prices. Can you see that? Oh, you can't. There we go. High oil prices are generally going to be temporary, but they're going to shift aggregate supply um, out, maybe, if it's a short run. If it's a longer run phenomenon, if prices are going up, it's going to mean that everybody's spending more money on everything, and we can see the economy overheat, get going too fast, um, too high, too fast because of inflationary pressures. Um, and this is one of the concerns that are happen when we think about um, worrying about prices getting too high without increasing the value of goods. Um, and so let's say we have some exogenous effect that increases our aggregate demand out to this higher level. Maybe it's higher oil prices. It could also be an increased demand for our goods from another country, but it shifts us out and we start to see higher than usual inflation. And so the Federal Reserve is going to be worried about that. They're going to see that and say, wow, we're worried about inflationary pressure on the economy and they're going to want to slow things down. If they want to slow things down, instead what they're going to do is they're going to raise the discount rate, raise the reserve ratio, or sell bonds. Any of these things will target a higher federal funds rate, shift the money supply in, raising the interest rate, decreasing investment spending, and shifting aggregate demand back in. And this is an example of the, there's an expression, and I think they reference it in the rap video, but this idea that the Federal Reserve's job is to take away the punch bowl when the party's getting too excited. This idea that sometimes the economy is running too hot and we have to slow it down to prevent a bigger crisis later on. So um, we can see monetary policy do those things to try and shift aggregate demand back in and control inflation, right? Control inflation, get us closer to our natural rate of output. We could also raise taxes to reduce consumption to shift aggregate demand in, or decrease government spending to shift aggregate demand in. And so this gets at one of the questions we didn't talk about a lot, which is this question of whether 
or not um, the Federal Reserve or should target a set inflation level or zero inflation. And this idea that there's two targets, it's not just high output, low unemployment, it's also stable, low manageable inflation. And that's why it's important to remember that when we're in a period of, say, very, very high output and low unemployment, we're going to be in a period of inflation. On the other hand, when we're in the global pandemic and we're down here, we're experiencing, I'm going to call it COVID aggregate demand. We've got low GDP and high unemployment. Okay, so that's everything. That's everything. Hopefully that helps. Let me know what questions you still have and I'll see you all next time for a review. Okay, take care.